The FBI has long been looking into the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club because of its reputation for engaging in illegal activity. While it is difficult to categorically list the top most feared Hells Angels members or leaders, a number of people have become well known over time. It's crucial to remember that the Hells Angels organization has numerous chapters throughout the world, and that depending on their locale, different members may have different influences and reputations. In this video, we'll discuss the top five Hells Angels that the FBI has ever feared. Let's start with number five, Maurice Mamboucher, the man whose name, according to legends, inspires fear in the hearts of FBI agents. Even the most seasoned agents reportedly felt shivers go down their spines when they saw Boucher, who had an intimidating aura and an infamous reputation as the leader of the Hells Angels branch in Montreal. Mom Boucher and his gang of motorcycle riding misfits must have made the FBI, which is renowned for taking on global crime syndicates and combating terrorists, shudder. According to legend, Boucher's illegal schemes were so daring and his influence so great that the FBI set up entire task squads to monitor him. In their top secret offices, they would huddle around and stare at photos of Boucher, his hulking build and handlebar mustache instilling fear in their clerical hearts. But let's step back from the land of legends and get back to the actual world. Although Boucher was a well-known member of the Hells Angels and engaged in criminal activity, it's safe to conclude that the FBI had more important things on its plate. Boucher may have been under surveillance, but it's exceedingly improbable that he was the most dreaded target in their sights. Therefore, even the most imaginative storyteller would find it difficult to imagine Mom Boucher as the most FBI-feared man. Despite the fact that he may have developed a reputation among biker communities, the FBI's attention was diverted to more important issues. Thus, Boucher and his antics were reduced to the status of a colorful footnote in the annals of criminal history. George Christie, who is ranked number four, is the man who supposedly made FBI officers shudder just by his very presence. Christie allegedly sent shockwaves through the FBI's ranks with his flowing silver hair and a motorcycle-riding swagger that could make even the toughest agent tremble. They claimed that FBI agents would rush for their case files and drop their donuts when his name was mentioned, because they feared the wrath of this leather-clad legend. According to legend, Christie had a special ability to confuse the FBI with his superb organizing skills. Agents of the FBI would be perplexed since he would organize covert operations from his biker lair. They would huddle in their desks and discuss how this motorbike fanatic kept outsmarting them while gazing at his picture on the wall. But let's leave fantasy behind and return to the real world. Even though Christie was a prominent member of the Hells Angels and had his share of legal troubles, it's safe to conclude that the FBI was more focused on other, more urgent issues. They were occupied tackling espionage, global criminal networks, and other genuine dangers to national security. Therefore, even the most creative comic would find it difficult to create the wonderful exaggeration that George Christie was the most FBI-feared man despite the fact that he may have developed a reputation among biker circles. The FBI was engaged in more significant conflicts, so Christie and his exploits in a leather cloak were relegated to myth and legend. Next up is number three, Mark Papa Gardado, the man who allegedly caused FBI officers shiny shoes to shudder. Papa Gardado was rumored to be the stuff of FBI nightmares, with his intimidating presence and a reputation that reputedly struck dread into the hearts of even the most seasoned investigators. Agents would cluster in their poorly lit offices, holding onto their credentials tenaciously, seeking to avoid coming into contact with this intimidating individual. According to legend, Gardado had a supernatural ability to avoid FBI observation. Agents would be left perplexed as he would vanish into thin air, calling into question their education. They would congregate in their personal hiding places, huddle around his image on the wall, and ponder how this motorcycle-riding outlaw could outwit them at every turn. But let's leave the land of fairy tales and head back to the real world. Gardado probably played a big role in the Hells Angels and engaged in some illegal activity, but it's safe to conclude that the FBI faced more formidable foes. They were occupied battling drug cartels, organized crime groups, and other genuine threats that needed their full attention. So, even though Poppy Gardado may have developed a reputation among bikers, to claim that he was the most FBI-feared figure is a ridiculous exaggeration that would be difficult for even the most creative storyteller to construct. 
Papa Gardado and his leather-clad exploits were left to exist in the world of fiction and folklore, since the FBI had more important problems to take care of. Stepping on to number two, Maurice Satan Bernardo, who according to legend was the man whose nickname alone gave FBI investigators shivers. Satan Bernardo apparently had the FBI shaking in their suits due to his evil reputation and diabolical name. Fearing that his demonic presence might taint their investigation files, agents would murmur his name in hushed tones. Satan Bernardo allegedly possessed supernatural abilities that enabled him to outsmart the FBI at every turn. Agents would look at him in bewilderment as he conjured up plans from the depths of biker hell. They would gather in pitch black spaces with crucifixes in hand and discuss how this demonic presence kept eluding them. But let's leave folklore behind and head back to the real world. As a Hells Angel, Satan Bernardo may have engaged in his fair share of criminal activity, but it's safe to say that the FBI faced more formidable foes. They were occupied fighting off global crime gangs, terrorist groups, and other present-day dangers. Therefore, even the most creative comic would find it difficult to imagine Satan Bernardo as the most FBI-feared man, despite the fact that he may have developed a terrifying reputation among biker groups. Satan Bernardo and his demonic antics were left to exist in the realms of fiction and folklore, since the FBI had more important things to deal with. Sonny Barger takes the number one position. According to folklore, Sonny Barger, a legendary member of the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club, has earned a reputation that makes the FBI nervous. Barger has a lengthy history of being connected to the club's inner workings because of his wild beard and imposing demeanor. However, to assert that he is the most FBI-feared individual is akin to saying that a bulldog is the most feared animal in a petting zoo. Barger undoubtedly attracted the attention of law enforcement organizations, notably the FBI, with his captivating demeanor and outspoken attitude. He became a representation of the Hells Angels, a man whose very name could chill the spines of his foes. However, it might be a slight exaggeration to claim that the FBI spent its evenings tossing and turning in fear of Sonny Barger. Barger did engage in illegal activity and did time in prison, but let's not forget that police departments have faced far more serious dangers than a bunch of bikers revving their motors. The FBI focuses its efforts on battling organized crime, terrorism, and other significant threats to national security. Sonny Barger may have been a formidable influence within the Hells Angels, but to say that he was the most FBI-feared man is an exaggeration that even the most imaginative of writers would find difficult to construct. Law enforcement has had to contend with problems much bigger than a bunch of leather-clad bikers speeding down the roadways. Sonny Barger, Maurice Mamboucher, George Christie, and Maurice Satan Bernardo, to name a few, have all made an indelible stamp on Hells Angels history. While their fame may have given rise to exaggerated stories of intimidation and fear, it's crucial to maintain perspective. The FBI's concerns go far beyond a bunch of leather-clad motorcyclists. Therefore, let's enjoy the vivid mythology surrounding these people while also keeping in mind that the FBI's formidable adversaries are not limited to motorbike fanatics, but also include multinational crime syndicates and risks to national security. Do you know of any other criminal gangs or people who have presented the FBI with more difficulties and dangers than the Hells Angels? If so, please tell us in the comment section. A police informant whose testimony helped convict drug traffickers, gun smugglers, and members of the Hells Angels. The FBI takes on the Hells Angels, agents raiding a North Bay saloon that was a hangout for the notorious biker gang. Feuding motorcycle clubs have authorities on high alert tonight. We continue tracking Saturday night shooting out of Pawtucket. The Hells Angels, a notorious motorcycle club, have left their mark on culture as a mysterious and divisive organization. They have both attracted and terrified people because of their distinctive look and violent past. As we dispel their mystique, let's explore the fascinating world of the Hells Angels. In this video, we're going to talk about the sacrifices that have to be made by Hells Angels members. But before we dive right into their sacrifices, let's first understand a little bit about them. The majority of people think that Hells Angels members belong to a criminal group but the motorcycle gang actually operates as a close-knit brotherhood of Hell's Angels. And it does sound fairly great to be riding a Harley Davidson while sporting a stylish black leather jacket. Gang members are typically shown as having dangerous and unlawful lives and engaging in crimes like drug trafficking, racketeering, and extortion. 
However, a Hells Angels member's reality may vary depending on their position within the organization, which specific chapters they are a part of, and their distinct situations. Chapter Captains and Loyalty Agreements Numerous biker organizations and gangs use chapter heads and allegiance agreements. Some Hells Angels members might deal with drug dealers in an underground club to start their day. However, for the bulk of the group, mornings consist of a bowl of cornflakes, a hot cup of coffee, and a conversation with a partner and children, ultimately departing for work in accordance with the law. Several gang members have double lives and share numerous tales. If you search for this information online, stories of children learning about their father's secret background as a Hells Angels biker can be found. To join the Hells Angels, a person must go through a drawn-out and difficult process known as prospecting. Prospects usually go through hazing and are asked to complete various tasks assigned to them by existing members of the team during this time. Prospects must demonstrate their commitment to the team and willingness to engage in unlawful activities. After being found worthy of joining, prospective members are given full membership status. Hells Angels members are required to adhere to strict regulations and standards of behavior. Once a member, they are expected to attend frequent meetings and take part in the club's activities. Gang members are required to adhere to rigorous dress codes and wear attire that bears the Hells Angels logo or colors. Because the A gang is sometimes considered a family or way of life, members may develop deep relations and Hells Angels members frequently take pride in their sense of brotherhood and friendship. While the gang gives many members who may have grown up among bikers a sense of purpose and belonging, a Hells Angels member's life can also be dangerous. Threats could be experienced by risky members. They might also be expected to participate in violent acts to defend the gang's interest or exact retribution on their enemies, whether those enemies are other gangs, the police, or other criminal businesses, maintaining the gang's honor and reputation at all costs. Because of the gang's unlawful operations, members ran the risk of being taken into custody and thrown in prison. It is challenging for Hells Angels and other outlaw motorcycle organizations to avoid trouble because law enforcement agencies all over the world deliberately seek them out. Hells Angels members can also benefit from several perks and incentives. Members of the Hells Angels may have access to exclusive events and parties, receive special discounts at biker bars and other businesses, and enjoy a certain level of respect and influence within the biker community, among other benefits. But their lives are not just parties. Within the gang, there is a rigorous hierarchy, with senior members holding positions of responsibility. Newer members may be required to show respect and deference to their seniors, and if they fail to do so, they might even receive physical punishment. The gang also places a great emphasis on loyalty, and individuals who betray the group or its trade secrets run the risk of facing severe repercussions. It may be necessary to take a loyalty oath, promising to protect the gang's interest and keep its secrets. This other infraction may result in consequences like fines and the expulsion of members, or possibly cause physical injury. The Hells Angels and other illicit motorcycle organizations have recently come under intense scrutiny. Numerous gang members have been detained and found guilty over the years by law enforcement and other organizations. It is also more challenging for the gang to operate in some places as a result of some law enforcement agencies' harsh crackdown on the gang's illegal activities because numerous motorcycle clubs and other businesses have barred their members from experiencing the pride and recognition that come with belonging to a group. Members of the gang, which is another aspect of the Hells Angels lifestyle, usually show pride in their colors and identify as rebels who disobey societal conventions. They may also regard themselves as champions of liberalism. Along with their criminal actions, the Hells Angels support freedom of expression, individualism, and defiance of persecution and conformity. They may also participate in toy drives and other charitable events. Some chapters may help struggling families, while others may support poor children or veterans. These deeds strengthen the gang member's sense of brotherhood and enhance the Hells Angel gang's reputation. Despite the dangers and challenges of the lifestyle, members are committed to the gang for life. However, some members may eventually abandon the gang for a variety of reasons, including individual ones or a wish to cease engaging in illegal activities. Being a member of the Hells Angels gang is a complex experience full of excitement, risk of bonding, and problems. However, quitting the gang can be tough because ex-members may suffer threats or vengeance from their former allies. While some gang members view the sense of belonging and identification the gang offers as a way of life, others embrace it. 
Entrance into the Hells Angels or any other outlaw motorcycle club is ultimately a serious decision that needs to be carefully considered, as the Hells Angels engage in many sinister activities and others may incur hazards and hardships as a result of their participation, such as crime organizations, drug trafficking and violence in a variety of crimes, including extortion for money. Gang members may take drugs and develop drug addictions. Laundering and even murder have been linked to them. It may result in legal and health problems. One of the most notorious and deadliest motorcycle gangs in the world, the Hells Angels are well known. As the Hells Angels, they have been involved in several violent incidents, including brawls, shootouts, and bombings to maintain their hold on power and control. Members have a history of misogyny, many use violence and intimidation, and even engage in vigilante justice against anyone they believe to be a threat to the gang's goals. It's possible for some women to join the gang to experience abuse or exploitation, either at the hands of specific gang members or the gang as a whole. Prejudice against women by the gang is also a prison when it comes to leadership and decision-making chances. Along with dangers from rival gangs and the police, Hells Angels members also suffer major health risks. Furthermore, there's a probability that they have a higher likelihood of becoming harmed or dying in altercations or motorcycle crashes. In general, it's crucial to refrain from romanticizing or minimizing the drawbacks of the Hells Angels gang's way of life. There are significant risks and dangers involved, both for the individuals involved and for society as a whole, despite the possibility of camaraderie and pleasure. The Hells Angels represent a perilous and enigmatic society and continue to be a group that is both admired and feared. They have a lasting legacy in popular culture thanks to their status as outlaws and links to organized crime, but it's crucial to understand that a complex narrative exists beneath the infamous image and leather-clad facade. The appeal of the Hells Angels resides in their capacity to instill in individuals who join their ranks a sense of brotherhood, loyalty, and identification. The Hells Angels provide some people with a haven from society's pressures and a close-knit group where friendships made on the open road foster a strong sense of identity. The group's involvement in illegal activity, however, cannot be denied, casting a shadow over its existence and sustaining a reputation for violence and lawlessness. Behind the recognizable symbol are a number of people with various histories and biographies. We must keep in mind that they join the Hells Angels for a variety of reasons. It is important to address the fact that they are not a single, undifferentiated group. Even though their acts may be debatable and their activities frequently illegal, they are people with unique complexities and nuances as human beings. So, we hope you found this video informative. What are your views on Hells Angels? Do let us know in the comments below. The Hells Angels Motorcycle Organization, infamous for its unique insignia and bad reputation, has a history of being linked to numerous horrifying atrocities. Their past is marked by violence and illegal dealings, from gruesome killings to structured criminal activities, and it reflects the shadowy side of outlaw motorcycle gang culture. In this video, we will delve into the most horrific murders ever committed by the Hells Angels. Starting off with number 6 on the list is the Altamont Free Concert. The Altamont Free Concert, which took place on December 6, 1969, was meant to be a historic occasion signifying the end of the counterculture movement of the 1960s. The Altamont Speedway in California hosted the free music event, which included the Rolling Stones as the headliners. The concert, however, ended up being a tragic, chaotic incident that opened a new chapter in the history of rock music. Organization and security were issues that were raised early on. The Rolling Stones engaged the Hells Angels Motorcycle Organization to serve as security in an effort to surpass the popularity of the Woodstock concert. Unfortunately, this choice would have serious repercussions. As the concert went on, it became clear that the crowd was rowdy and that the Hells Angels were unprepared due to their use of narcotics and alcohol. A young African-American man named Meredith Hunter was spotted with a gun close to the stage when the Stones were performing. Hunter was ambushed and repeatedly stabbed by Alan Fasaro, a member of the Hells Angels who was employed as security. The incident, which was caught on camera, revealed the savage act of violence in the midst of the concert's mayhem. Hunter succumbed to his injuries, and his passing served as a metaphor for the counterculture movement's sinister undercurrents. 
The Altamont Free Concert came to stand for the terrible conclusion to the 1960s peace and love philosophy. The risks of unbridled violence and drug abuse within the counterculture movement were made clear. The incident had a significant effect on the music business and prompted a review of crowd control and security procedures at concerts. The Altamont Free Concert acts as a somber reminder of the possible outcomes when things go wrong. Coming in at number 5 on the list is Nancy Spungen. On October 12, 1971, an event involving Mick Jagger's girlfriend Nancy Spungen occurred and was the subject of debate and rumors. Nancy Spungen, an American with a difficult past and connections to the punk rock movement, was discovered dead in a hotel bathroom in London. At the time, Nancy Spungen was Jerry Hall's girlfriend. Jerry Hall had previously served as Mick Jagger's bodyguard. Her death circumstances are still up for discussion and speculation. According to accounts, Spungen had a history of drug use and erratic behavior, and her relationship with her lover was rumored to be trouble. Having stayed in the hotel room next to Spungen's, Hells Angels Motorcycle Club member Tom Klein became involved in the investigation. Klein was first accused of killing her and put on trial for the crime. He was finally found not guilty owing to a lack of evidence, though. The precise circumstances behind Spungen's death are still a mystery, and the case is still open. Over the years, speculation and other ideas have surfaced, with some contending that she was murdered as a result of a failed robbery attempt or a drug-fueled altercation. Due to Nancy Spungen's connections to the punk and rock music sectors and her friendship with Mick Jagger's former bodyguard, the case of her death continues to pique public interest. Her death circumstances continue to be a terrible and puzzling episode in music history. Moving on to number four in the list is Mick Howie. On February 15, 2009, in Sydney, Australia, Mick Howie, a well-known figure in the criminal underground and the previous national head of the Comancheros Motorcycle Gang, was murdered. The Hells Angels and the Comancheros, two opposing motorcycle clubs, were engaged in a bloody feud at the time of the occurrence. For a while, there had been an increase in the number of violent altercations and tit-for-tat assaults between the Hells Angels and the Comancheros. Howie, who was well known for his charismatic leadership, was viewed as a key figure among the Comancheros and had contributed significantly to their activities. On that fatal day, a group of armed, masked men accosted Howie as he was leaving a gym in the southern suburbs of Sydney. Howie was shot multiple times by the perpetrators, who then fled the scene in a stolen getaway car after badly injuring him. Howie was taken to the hospital in a hurry, but he passed away from his wounds shortly after. His murder highlighted the ongoing conflicts between the motorcycle clubs and sent shockwaves across the criminal underworld. It also garnered a lot of media coverage. Several people thought to have been engaged in the attack were identified and apprehended as a result of the inquiry into Howie's murder. Two men were accused of killing him in 2013. They received a life sentence after being found guilty in 2018. Mick Howie's murder brought to light the fierce rivalry between motorcycle clubs in Australia and their considerable power within the criminal underworld. It served as a warning about the perils of organized crime and the potential for fatal outcomes in these disputes. Stepping on to number three in the list is Anthony Banesh. The murder of Anthony Banesh, which happened on March 18, 2006 in Austin, Texas, was associated with a bloody conflict between the Hells Angels and the Banditos, two opposing motorcycle organizations. Dominic Banesh was affiliated with the Hells Angels, while Anthony Banesh belonged to the Banditos motorcycle gang. For years, there had been a growing hostility between the two clubs, highlighted by altercations and territory disputes. The Banesh brothers were caught in the middle of this acrimonious conflict. Anthony and Dominic Banesh were in attendance at a meeting of the Texas Confederation of Clubs and Independents, a confederation of motorcycle clubs that advocates for biker rights the night of the incident. Anthony Banesh was shot and killed in what appears to have been an ambush as they were leaving the meeting. Richard Merla, a member of the Hells Angels who was on a mission to assassinate members of rival gangs, committed the murder. Alongside his brother, Dominic Banesh was able to make a safe getaway. The murder of Anthony Banesh shocked the Texas motorcycle club scene and heightened hostilities between the Banditos and the Hells Angels. Coming in at number two on our list is Dino Big D. Haney. On April 27, 2002, Dino Big D. Haney was involved in an incident that happened during the Laughlin River Run, a motorbike rally that took place in Laughlin, Nevada. 
Although the specifics of Haney's killing are not well known, it is known that there was a violent altercation between the Hells Angels and the Mongols Motorcycle Club. Dino Big D. Haney, a member of the Mongols Motorcycle Club, was slain in the altercation by a Hells Angel. The fight was a part of a protracted conflict between the two infamous outlaw motorcycle groups. At the gathering, the gunshot caused chaos and panic, causing participants to flee for cover and law enforcement officials to hurry to the area to regain control. The episode heightened hostilities between the Hells Angels and the Mongols, inspiring other acts of violence and vengeance in the years that followed. Moving forward to number one in the list is the murder of Jeffrey Jethro Pettigrew. On September 23, 2011, Jeffrey Jethro Pettigrew was killed at a motorbike show in Sparks, Nevada. The Hells Angels Motorcycle Club San Jose branch was presided over by Pettigrew. The Hells Angels and the Vagos Motorcycle Gang had been at odds for quite a while when the event happened. Members of the Hells Angels and the Vagos got into a fight during the expo. Pettigrew was shot numerous times while he was standing close to the Nugget Hotel Casino's entrance, owned by John Asquaga. The shooting caused a chaotic scene as everyone ran for cover and law enforcement arrived quickly. The shooter who killed Pettigrew was identified as Vagos Motorcycle Club member Ernesto Manuel Gonzalez. Gonzalez was promptly detained and charged, among other things, with first-degree murder. The murder of Pettigrew increased hostilities between the Hells Angels and the Vagos, sparking reprisal attacks and an uptick in violence. The incident increased scrutiny of outlaw motorcycle organizations' operations and attendance at public events. The murder of Jeffrey Jethro Pettigrew brought attention to the risks and drawbacks of conflicts and rivalries between motorcycle organizations. It highlighted the likelihood of violence and the tremendous effects it might have on the people and communities affected by these conflicts. So these were some of the most horrific murders that took place in the history of the Hells Angels. Which one did you find the most horrific? Do let us know in the comments below. The most violent Hells Angels of all time. The Hells Angels, a notorious motorcycle club with a global presence, has become synonymous with a reputation for violence, lawlessness, and criminal activities. Throughout its history, the Hells Angels have been involved in numerous confrontations, clashes, and incidents that have cemented their notoriety. Within the ranks of this infamous club, there have emerged individuals who have stood out as the epitome of violence, commanding fear and respect within their own brotherhood and beyond. One person's name stands out among the others, representing great strength and a merciless nature, Frank Frankie the Bombaksha. We will discuss that later in the video, so stick around till the end. Sonny Barger No list of the most violent Hells Angels would be complete without mentioning Sonny Barger, the iconic figurehead and founding member of the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club. Barger, known for his rugged demeanor and fearless approach, was a key figure in the violent clashes between rival biker gangs during the 1960s and 1970s. His involvement in the infamous Hollister Riot of 1947, along with his later run-ins with the law, solidified his reputation as a fierce and relentless enforcer. Ralph Sonny Barger Jr. The son of Sonny Barger, Ralph Sonny Barger Jr., inherited his father's propensity for violence. Active during the late 1960s and 1970s, Sonny Jr. was known for his aggressive and brutal tactics. He was involved in several notorious incidents, including the infamous Ultimate Speedway Free Festival in 1969, where violence erupted, leading to the death of a concert goer. Sonny Jr.'s ferociousness and his willingness to resort to extreme measures to protect the club's interests further solidified his position among the most violent Hells Angels. Morris Mombucher Moving beyond the United States, Morris Mombucher, a Canadian Hells Angels member, is widely regarded as one of the most violent figures in the club's history. Butcher gained notoriety during the Quebec Biker War of the 1990s, a violent turf war between the Hells Angels and rival motorcycle gangs. He was known for his ruthless tactics, orchestrating bombings, arson attacks, and assassinations. Butcher's reign of terror eventually came to an end when he was convicted of murder and sentenced to life in prison. Mark Papa Guardado Mark Papa Guardado, the former president of the San Francisco chapter of the Hells Angels, was a charismatic and fearsome figure within the club. Guardado's violent streak led him to be involved in numerous biker conflicts during the early 2000s. His reign as president was marked by an escalation of violence and power struggles within the San Francisco chapter. 
Tragically, Guardado's life was cut short in 2008 when he was gunned down in a shooting that remains unsolved to this day. Walter Wally O'Dell Walter Wally O'Dell, a member of the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club in California, was notorious for his involvement in drug trafficking, extortion, and acts of extreme violence. Odell was known for his explosive temper and willingness to engage in physical confrontations. His most infamous act of violence occurred in 2002 when he assaulted a member of a rival gang with a baseball bat during the Lachlan River Run riot, leading to the death of three individuals. Odell was eventually convicted of multiple charges and sentenced to life in prison. Harry Taco Bauman Harry Taco Bauman was the former president of the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club in the United States, serving from 1989 to 1997. Known for his violent temperament and criminal activities, Bauman was heavily involved in drug trafficking, extortion, and organized crime. Under his leadership, the Hells Angels became embroiled in a series of violent conflicts with rival gangs, resulting in numerous casualties. Bauman's reign as president came to an end when he was arrested in 1997 on federal racketeering charges, ultimately leading to his conviction and life imprisonment. George Christie George Christie was a prominent member of the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club, serving as the president of the Ventura chapter in California for over 30 years. While not as notorious for acts of violence as some other members on this list, Christie gained a reputation for his involvement in criminal enterprises and his ability to navigate the underworld. He was known for his strategic maneuvers and willingness to use intimidation tactics to protect the interests of the club. Christie's influence extended beyond the realm of violence, as he became a controversial figure through his subsequent books and media appearances. Morris Mongo Lussier Morris Mongo Lussier, a former member of the Hells Angels in Quebec, Canada, is remembered for his involvement in one of the most shocking acts of violence associated with the club. In 2000, during the Quebec Biker War, Lussier was part of a group that orchestrated the killing of two prison guards, a crime that shocked the nation. Lussier was subsequently convicted and sentenced to life in prison, further contributing to the notorious legacy of violence surrounding the Hells Angels. Peter Big Pete James Peter Big Pete James, a former national president of the Hells Angels in Australia, was a significant figure within the club's Australian chapters. James was involved in a series of violent conflicts, particularly during the infamous Milpera Massacre in 1984. This shootout between the Hells Angels and rival motorcycle gang, the Comancheros, resulted in the deaths of seven individuals, including four Comancheros and two innocent bystanders. James himself was seriously injured in the incident but survived. The Milpera Massacre stands as one of the most violent and notorious events in the history of biker gang conflicts in Australia. Jerry Animal Oliver Jerry Animal Oliver a former surgeon at arms for the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club in California, was widely feared for his violent and unpredictable nature. Oliver was known to carry out acts of brutality with little provocation and had a reputation for using his physical strength to intimidate and attack adversaries. His involvement in various criminal activities and violent incidents contributed to the overall image of the Hells Angels as a dangerous and formidable organization. David Davidwell David Davidwell also known as Yankee, was a prominent figure in the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club in Canada. He served as the president of the Hells Angels Ontario chapter and was known for his involvement in organized crime, drug trafficking, and acts of violence. Atwell was a central figure during the Quebec Biker War and was involved in several violent clashes with rival gangs. His criminal activities eventually led to his arrest and imprisonment. Frank Frankie the Bombaccia Frank Frankie the Bombaccia a former member of the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club in New York, gained notoriety for his involvement in bombings and other acts of violence. Baksha was a skilled bomb maker and was often tasked with carrying out attacks against rival gangs and individuals who posed a threat to the Hells Angels' interests. His expertise in explosives made him a feared and dangerous member within the organization. The Hells Angels have long held a reputation for violence, and within their ranks, certain individuals have elevated this reputation to legendary proportions. Sonny Barger Ralph Sonny Barger Jr., Morris Mombocher, Mark Papa Guardado, and Walter Wally O'Dell represent a selection of the most violent Hells Angels of all time. These individuals, through their ruthless tactics, acts of terror, and involvement in criminal activities, have left an indelible mark on the history of the Hells Angels. However, it is important to note that these individuals do not define the entire club, 
as there are many members who have chosen a different path and have distanced themselves from the violent elements. So guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. For more interesting content, give this video a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more awesome content. Have a nice day, and I will see you in the next video.